so both me and you have have quite a a wispy Air Max background, so we're well aware of the products that Ubiquiti makes for that um, sort of market and area. But I made a video for the Hostify channel today, which went out. Um, so we're recording this on Wednesday. But Ubiquiti have made these two new devices, one of which looks like a nanobeam, but they're they're called the Unified Device Bridge and Unified Device Bridge Pro, and these are very similar ethos in products to the unified building bridges where they are unified managed outdoor links essentially um and and they look quite interesting so the, the first one is a little uh, device called the bridge the device bridge it looks like a poe injector <laughs> um but it's essentially uh, essentially a way to get a a wired device be it poe or not it could be anything connected to the network it's like a like a wireless adapter basically with an ethernet Peer we out on it um but i thought that was quite cool really um and yeah yeah and i think the device bridge i'd have to double check but i believe it's indoor so it's more so like if yeah. you don't want to run a long cable to a far away camera yeah. or access point or something like that um this would like do that and then the basically the power supply connects to your yeah unify wi-fi network with uh auto link yeah so that that's a you know, it, it's a pretty nice thing to kind of uh, be, you know, expand your unified network in a flexible way, yep. especially when you don't want to run a long cable. Uh, the Bridge Pro, yeah, it's definitely more of a nano beam style product. It does the same thing where it can, you can kind of aim it towards your unified Wi-Fi network and it'll auto connect that way. But you can also have a pair of uh, Bridge Pros and they, yeah, they, they do basically do the same thing as like a UISP point to point link. Yep. Um, so this can be, I think they advertise five kilometers or three point miles yeah. of range. So you could have a, a long distance link to another building or to a far away access point or camera, those kind of things. And those will link up and make a wireless link to extend your network that way. Uh, I I personally, I, I'm more comfortable with the UISP products, but this being in the Unify world, I think is going to allow people to build those kind of networks a lot, a lot easier than going to the UISP. Yes, yeah, so in the video I made today, um i had a section in the day why have they done this and it's more i the, i came up with the reason that that unify is an inc- incredibly strong brand um, For sure. but also it reduces complexity so there are a lot of people which are going to really struggle with doing the whole config of a, a nanobeam it is quite involved if you if you're not too comfortable doing it um you have to set your laptop to a static range you have to configure ssids passwords you have to change there's a we're used to but there's a lot of there's a lot of steps there and it's it can be quite tricky um so those are more specialized those those can still do point to multi-point you can collect 50 60 100 clients to one ap if you want to these can't do that they are strictly point to point um if you do them that way but also the other benefit is poe so apart from the now station 5ac the big one all of those are 24 volt passive which has its downsides but also has it has a, a legacy rooted within the Wisp industry. These are all 48 volt standard PoE, which is again a, a non a less experienced person might think, "Oh, why is this 24 volt? It doesn't work. It doesn't power up. It's broken." So at least they can plug it in. It still works, and it also powers up the cameras because that's one of the use cases they suggested was that you put this somewhere, have a camera pointed somewhere, and stuff, and it's all the same voltage. It all works nicely. But then. Also, you don't have to have a separate... If you're an MSP, you don't have to have a separate controller to run it and stuff. It all goes in there nicely. So, yeah, I know why they've done it. It makes a lot of sense. Um, and Yeah, and, and for $100 for the, the non-pro yeah. and, what, $200 for the, the pro yeah. model or 400 for a pair, um, these make a lot more sense to me than the building bridge because, yes, you still get that simplicity. Um, I think there is some differences with PoE, just like you mentioned. But those for... Four ninety nine or nine ninety nine. I, I always felt like they were kind of poor value, especially compared to like a you know a pair of nano beams that can do the same thing. Well, the building bridge is sixty gigahertz. Right. Okay. So maybe not the nano beam. The uh, like giga beam yeah, or yeah, the yeah. products. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They do have sixty gigahertz. So yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I was very surprised by this announcement. But yeah, it makes a lot of sense, and I, I think a lot of people that only are comfortable with Unify or aren't a, you know, network engineer or don't yep. have a background in the, you know, WISP industry like we do. Yeah. It's a no brainer to kind of solve that problem of, you know, how do I extend my network easily? 
the other thing I came up with is that is that Unify it didn't for a while, but when you, I've got two building bridges links at here, they they didn't used to, but they now report back their topology back to Unify. So it used to be that the switches mm-hmm. downstream of those building bridges just existed in in the ether and didn't know where they were, but now they actually report it properly. So this for there's a it happens a lot where someone has installed something leaves and leaves it to for some other idiot to pick it to clear it up. <laughs> so at least now if someone someone comes and looks at an installation someone's done remotely, they can at least see where everything's connected enough to sort of work out what someone's done. <laughs> so yeah. there's that side as well. So 